So listen, you know, I'll be the first to admit that uh, I don't know everything about everything when it comes to uh, growing a YouTube channel. But what I do know is what has worked for me, and I know it can work for you too. So I wanted to get do this live stream to share some of the strategies that I've been using to grow my YouTube channel and <clears throat> in an effort that maybe it would help you grow your YouTube channel. So um, I've got a little presentation here prepared that <clears throat> I'll go through in just a second. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, so I started this channel about two years ago and um, you know, I come from a background uh, in video production and video marketing. So I'm kind of spoiled in that sense that I come onto the scene, you know, already, you know, able to produce and, and, and do things. So, so I'm a little spoiled, but um, what YouTube has done for me personally is as a professional and as a creator is it has really humbled me, you know, um, going from uh, high quality professional video all the time to making videos on the fly and doing them as fast as possible and, and making them as good as possible to relate to the audience, to, to bump up the audio retention. So um, it's, been a, it's been a really awesome journey. And so that kind of brings me into my first slide is, you know, a lot of times um, people will ask me, you know, what camera should I start with shooting? What editing platform should I start doing? Um, um, I'm not good on camera. Um, you know, I don't have a good space to shoot in. And um, my really my first point really is just to get over yourself. Um, you you got to just move past it. Um, I think the longer you don't um, make videos and record videos, the the, the longer it's going to take you to actually do it. And you know, a lot of us want to you know be perfect and and want to you know be able to have the, the best looking video and and uh, get all the views and subscribers right off the bat, um, but you know, to look at it this way, you know, always try to do and to be better. You know, you doing is going to be you bettering yourself. So, and I'm the same way. I'm always trying to do better and try different things. And just by doing it, you're going to get better. Um, but it's, it can be a big step for people to, uh, to not do it because uh, they think they need to be perfect and uh, they're not good on camera. Um, one thing I'd try and do uh, to help simplify that process is I have a uh, video script template set out for YouTube videos specifically called the ICIC formula where you identify, connect, um, influence, and convert. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, that guide can actually be found on my website on uh, videozeus.com. I'll uh, drop a link in the chat for that right now. So you can check that out yourself, download that guide, and, uh, and that'll really help you uh, format your YouTube videos to make it easier because it's always like what to say. What do I say when I get on camera? What, I'm going to mess up, and, and certainly all that can be fixed in editing, but um, you know, this script helps kind of answer some of those questions for you about, you know, geez, what do I, uh, what do, I do, you know, type of thing. So, uh, so that's the first one. Uh, let's see here. We got... Uh, you know, one more. Um, know your niche. So this is a really big one for me because um, I come from a marketing background and, you know, it's all about uh, target audience and demographics and that sort of thing. And um, as it relates to YouTube channels, um, it's, it's very important to understand what your role as a creator is on YouTube. Um, what, what is your purpose behind, um, you know, what, what makes a successful channel on YouTube? And um, it all comes down to knowing your audience, which essentially is knowing your niche. You know, what topic is it that you're going to pursue? A lot of times, uh, early on, a lot of us creators are experimenting a lot. So we're making lots of different types of videos. But then something clicks in inside of us, and we're like, let's take this seriously and try to grow a channel. So to do that, and to grow an, uh, a specific audience, you have to be targeted and everything that you think about when it comes to your making videos for your channel. And that goes as far as um, being highly specific about a certain topic and not making uh, videos about random topics, about random um, uh, techniques and whatever it is related to your industry. So to always be um, targeted in what you're pursuing. So, you know, my channel specifically is, you know, video, in a, as a, in, a, in a sense, it's video production, it's video marketing, it's video conferencing, it's video editing, 
a lot. It's 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 related to video, but you know you could be a um, a gamer. You know, a gamer. Uh, the, I think one of the biggest mistakes for gaming channels is that the one of the biggest mistakes for gaming channels is that they are playing and doing videos for multiple games. I really think early on, you know, under twenty thousand subscribers, this can work for anybody. But to have a particular niche, so you're only making videos about that one game. Or you're only making videos about gardening or or, or uh, tattoos um, or, or or Zoom or whatever it is that's that's out there and that you're passionate about. Um, knowing your niche is, you, you know, you're going to be passionate about doing something. And there's things we can do. I'll show you here in a minute that we can validate what people are looking for to see if there's any interest behind what you're passionate about doing videos for. Um, but uh, but knowing your niche is. Um, it's got to be there. There's so many channels out there that uh, you can look at your you can look at your own channel and you can look at it and say, what was the most popular video for me? Um, and and then you have all these other videos that are, are in random topics. And a lot of times, I can you you can typically tell like you you gained a lot of views and um, subscribers from that one video. That maybe is YouTube telling you that uh, that they like that content and people would connect to that content. So that's just one way to to think about how to approach. Um, your niche, and so I um, I always like to say, you know, um, if you're super passionate about that topic, could you make a hundred videos on that topic and not be sick of it? Um, if you if you think <laughs> that sounds like a lot, then maybe that's not the niche or topic. Perhaps regardless of your experience on that topic um, to to pursue, but you can also look at trending topics and things that are future proof in a sense. So. Those are some, some techniques to find your niche. Springtime down here in the south and uh, a lot of pollen out there. So got the water. Um, all right. So we're going to move on to the next one. And uh, after we're done with this, I'll answer some questions in the chat, that sort of thing. But you want to um, you want to solidify what your niche is so that it will influence basically everything you do on your channel going forward. And one of those um, strategies, per se, is leveraging what is called video SEO. And SEO certainly may be um, known to you, common to you, um, as search engine optimization. If you work in a business, in the marketing, it's basically creating content to attract and appeal to the search engines. Um, basically, um, fighting over keywords and keyword phrases that relate to how people search things in Google. Um, and of course, YouTube. And so, um, so taking that same kind of philosophy and mindset that, okay, hey, if I, you know, instead of making videos that I really want to make, and there's nothing wrong with making videos that you want to make. Again, I think the creator journey is that we're all going to find a sense of, is this a channel thing to grow or am I just making YouTube videos for fun? You know, whatever it is, it's totally cool. Uh, but if you decide to ch take your channel and you want to get more views and more subscribers, um, then leveraging video SEO is going to be able to do that for you. Um, make no mistake, the um, early success that I have had with my channel, um, it was not done on accident. Um, it was done on purpose. And it was done by following these steps I'm sharing with you today to help really get a clear idea of you know, what your channel is, what audience you can serve specifically because, you know, my video, my channel is about, you know, making videos. And if I started making videos about um, how to cook shrimp, you know, it's going to be a really big disconnect for my viewers, my audience, because they're expected to, they're expecting to see video related content. So if you're making content all over the place, it's going to be very tough for you to, to single out a good audience to grow with. And so that all boils down to how you actually are making videos that get discovered. So discoverability is a lot of uh, big topic in terms of um, getting your videos viewed, you know, because again, we make all this effort to, <laughs> to make videos and uh, you know, you get 49 views. It's, it can be a pretty big blow, especially if you spend a couple hours on that, uh, get, getting your hopes up, that sort of thing. And so by leveraging video SEO, you're going to be able to not only um, attract more views and subscribers, but you, you'll also be able to rank in search results. And so 
ranking in search results either on Google or YouTube is going to help your video get discovered. And so, uh, so yeah, we all know that YouTube is the second largest search engine, uh, Google being number one, and Google owning YouTube. We know that. So we got to think about YouTube in the same light. It's a search engine, um, and it can be used as a search engine to grow your channel early on. And what I like about video SEO is it's actually pretty easy once you kind of see the nomenclature of how things are laid out. So let me, let me walk through a little exercise here. And I want you know you guys to think about you know your niche when it comes to video. Perhaps maybe there's someone in chat that has a niche. Um, you know, feel free to share that. I can run this example with that as well. Um, but you know, me specifically, you know, uh, I've been making a lot of videos lately about Zoom um, virtual backgrounds because it's uh, it's been trending, which is something I'll be talking about here in a, here in a few minutes. But um, but it's also related to video and what I do because it's communications, it's video related, there's uh, gear questions, there's streaming questions, there's lots of different things that I've been able to provide information for. So if we can even start on Google, and you guys can do this at home or on your phone, wherever you want, just go to Google and type in like your, like if you were searching for your videos, what would someone type in? What would you type in to find your video if you were just searching on Google? Um, you know, a keyword might be like how to use Zoom, okay? How do you use Zoom? Something like that. How, maybe it's, it's a, it's a how-to video or it can be anything. Uh, but what you're seeing right there, just by me typing this in Google, is that those drop-downs, those little, these little drop-down here, uh, key phrases that, um, these are suggested key phrases that other people are looking for when it comes to how to use Zoom. So right off the bat, you see how people are searching for these things. And if you take this and title your video with that, it's going to make the connection and your video will rank in Google and it will rank in YouTube. Now, it's not just about keyword stuffing. That's certainly not the case here. You still have to make a great video, um, but you can definitely take advantage of these search terms. And so this is kind of the front page of Google in terms of search terms, uh, this will validate that yes, this is a search term. Um, and what you can, I have um, something installed here called Keywords Everywhere, and that will show us the volume, this little thing up here, will show us the volume of how many people on a monthly basis are searching for this on um, Google. So it gives you an idea of how many people are looking for that. And this is all based off 12 months. So this time last year, 165,000 people were searching for how to use Zoom. And you can use that data and just um, uh, hypothesize that that is still within reach of how many people or times people are searching for, for this particular topic. And this is just one topic. This could be your topic. So think about your topic here. And that's a Google Chrome extension called Keywords Everywhere. But that's not really important right now because what you want to focus on is understanding how people are typing in. How to is a big one. Um, best, you know, best copyright free music sites. Um, think about how people would search for something if they were looking for something. Um, if you're doing uh, reviews about products, you know, um, depending on the, pr the, pr the, the popularity of the product, I would, you know, if you're doing like a DJI drone review, I would use the word DJI drone in the in the title or the, the concept of the video. Um, um, you know, if your video is about drone, uh, DJI drone, you want to try and um, aim to have a title that says something about DJI drone. That way they can make the connection with Google. So there's lots of different ways you can take advantage of um, of this. But basically what you want to focus on is is understanding how to uh, search in Google, how people search in Google. And so this will, can be um, replicated right into YouTube as well. You can search for the same term and you would get very similar results. And just right here, based off of um, this search, there's this video right here. That's the top page in, in Google for that 165,000 searches a month. And so there's other videos ranking below it. And then we have our SERP, our search engines results page, our traditional SERP here, which um, shows us the, the standard website listings for, for that search topic. Um, so, 
it's really cool to see that Google, you know, will uh, kind of puts this at the top, and you can see that across the board for anything you, in, anything you um, uh, search for in Google. Now, uh, what this kind of strategy does um, for you, and we'll just do another one, like Zoom, virtual background, you know, another topic that's been pretty hot um, that I've been covering a lot about. Um, all those, all of those drop downs right there. You could think about all those drop downs are basically their own standalone video. Zoom virtual background requirements, 2,400 searches a month. That's a video. Zoom virtual background on Android, potentially a video. Zoom virtual background images, 33,000 searches a month. That's a video. These are all specific videos, and you can do this for your, um, for your search term, whatever it would be, okay? Now, what, what seeing that list does and then understanding um, and you can all, let me scroll down here. You guys know about this maybe. Uh, there's more search terms, suggested search terms at the bottom of Google page that uh, can give you ideas, again, on how people are searching for things. And maybe, it's, maybe something like that would be better for you to pursue. But these alone, understanding the search term uh, nomenclature and understanding the um, search volume, these alone it tells you that people are, are looking for that video what it doesn't tell you what this information right here on the front end does not tell you is that your chance to actually rank for that search term you see we can go chasing keyword phrases all day <coughs> but if the video is not formatted and titled and and done well enough, um, it's not going to rank. Um, particularly if you're just going on the, with on the fly with trying to create titles. Uh, so basically, you know, knowing the key phrase, knowing the search phrase, is basically you uncovering clues on what to title your video. The key phrase should be in the top of that title as much as possible, so that it can make that connection. That hey, this is this key phrase, this search query can line up with this type of content, and one of those contents being your video. So what that does is once you start ranking, <clears throat> once you start ranking in search results, you're able to then um, pick up a lot more views and a lot more subscribers. Now, something I use to to validate whether or not I have a chance at ranking for a video is this software called morning fame and morning fame is basically a video seo tool for youtube that is just flat out awesome and i just love it now coming from an seo background um um coming from an seo background myself um I, there's other tools out there that kind of educate us um about you know the search volume, the the market, the rank difficulty, all that stuff that we have to kind of consider. What I like about Morning Fame is it just boils it all down and makes it super easy to to um, to read the data, to uh, make a decision, basically to make a decision about what video to make. Okay, so again, this is this is following the video SEO strategy. This is making videos that people are already looking for. And it's, you know, making how-to videos, review videos, best videos, uh, list videos, whatever it is. It's, it's doing it, but doing it with a search term. That's all we're doing It's doing it with a search term. So if we go into Morning Fame, um, it has a lot of great tool. I'm starting on number three search because I already kind of an, I have, have an idea of um, how to use the tool and what the search terms are for what I do. We'll just type in Zoom virtual background just because that was one I typed in earlier. And so what Zoom does is it provides us a grade, so to speak, of whether or not we should pursue this video. Now, all the data that you see in Morning Fame is being pulled from your own channel analytics. So the numbers and colors here that you see um, are based off my channel. So this is very specific. So if you were to do this same search in Morning Fame, the search volume, the number 63 would be the same, but the grades would be different. 
So what what these what these grades is doing is here is that the keyword Zoom virtual background uh, has a score of 63, which on a scale of 100 in terms of search volume is actually pretty good. Uh, it's got a double check mark there. Now, what that double check mark means is that this search term is not only being searched in YouTube, but it's also being searched inside Google. So it's like another way to, for you to get massive views and massive exposure by pursuing topics that had the double check mark. Okay, the grades underneath is your rank difficulty. These are telling you if you make this video based off of your competition, basically, could you actually rank a video in search results? Okay, so typically with morning fame, what you want to aim for is greens and yellows, and maybe in, maybe a red, maybe a red E, but you know greens and yellows. So it'd be a bunch, you know, A, B, C is what you want to aim for. Um, when I see these Fs, these Fs mean like don't even try it. You know you're going to make the video and it's not going to rank and it might be purposeful for you to make the video because maybe you're making it for a different reason other than trying to rank. So if you're making it for your clients or to educate someone about something specific, you're going to make the video regardless of what this says. But what I'm teaching here, showing you is that, you know, this could be an alternative for you to get more views if you were to uh, adopt the way that you search for things. Let me type in how to use Zoom virtual background. since that might be a little more specific. Of course, it's not going to load for me. But what Morning Fame does is it helps here. It goes, okay, so the, the grades have changed. There's definitely a lot more search volume involved here. It's being searched on Google and YouTube. There's other tools out there. There's like, um, there's uh, Morning Fame is my favorite. There's also TubeBuddy. There's VidIQ, and all those are fantastic tools. I love them. But, uh, you know, we, it all boils down to the end of the day, you know, what do you feel most comfortable with? And it's morning fame. I, I think the accuracy with morning fame is spot on. I mean, it's, it's, it tells you whether or not to pursue a video. Now, again, you're going to make the video if you want to make the video. But this is going to tell you that this search phrase, this um, way you would title your video potentially isn't the best choice to pursue this. AFFB, I probably, I have made that video in the past. Um, but you know, if this was just any search term, um, I would try to figure out a way to use that same, the core of that same, um, search term, but, uh, in a different way and something you can do then you can do this in zoom, all the search term stuff information in here in morning fame is the same as you would see it, um, inside Google or YouTube just doing this. So all we're doing basically is just typing in the search bar, um, but me, just by me putting a space behind background, it has all these other video topics that pop up. Uh, and you can click on any of these. And what these are, again, all the drop downs, these are all individual videos. That's how you got to look at these things. Like you're thinking about, like, you can use this to not only validate, it, can you rank for it, but you can use this to find ideas, other ideas on videos to do. Like, what do I make videos on? Just go in Google, just go in Google and type in your phrase and put a space behind it and see what pops up. That's 10 more videos that you could research and consider making for your channel if they are relevant to it, okay? You certainly don't want to go chasing something if it's not relevant to your audience. That's the disconnect. That's what we talked about earlier. So I'll spend a lot of time here, but um, I just want to get through, um, through um, you guys is that um, utilizing SEO with video uh, is an easy, it's probably the easiest way that you can start getting views like tomorrow. Now I want to go back and start retitling all your videos, but I would, I would go back and not, I would go and every video you do from now on, try and find a search term and validate it using something like morning fame to see what the search volume is and how difficult it is to rank. You can do a free account. I put the link in the chat below. Um, and we'll go on to the next one. But I'm certainly happy to answer any questions about morning fame um, after we get through here. All right. Yeah. So I, I touched on this a little bit. So you, you delivering great content. Now, delivering get great content um, can be a lot of things. But when it comes to growing a YouTube channel, it's about, it's about making content 
one that people want to see. It's about leveraging the SEO to make sure that um, you're making content that people are actually looking for. Now, you can't just because you follow this um, keyword phrase strategy to titling and deciding what videos to make, um, just because you do that doesn't mean that it's going to rank or perform well. Um, it's got to be a good video. And I talked about the ICIC script formula earlier in this video. And what that formula does is it breaks down your video into four parts and makes it super easy for you to write in what the next thing you would say. Um, it has you know the, the hook, the intro, it goes into your content, and then there's a call to action at the end. It's a super effective script template. If you watch any of my videos, you see it taking place every video. I'm going to try and stop waving my hand. <laughs> All right. So, um, so yeah, it's got to be good video. Uh, you, you can keyword stuff and try and trick the search engines into ranking your video. But if your video is not getting clicked on or it's not getting watched or watched in full, it's going to hurt your rating and it's going to drop out of search results. So at the end of the day, yes, um, you, you want to get, you know, you just want to get comfortable and better at being better by just making videos. Again, it doesn't have to be this great thing. Making a video, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about like it needs to be a great video to perform well, but it needs to be uh, a video that your people want to see. And it's got to be, I would say, direct. You don't want to waste people's time. And that's what that script formula helps you do. Helps you stay on track so you can get through the video, get to the content just as fast as you can. And that uh, script template can be downloaded at the videozeus.com homepage. Uh, the formula is called ICIC. It's Identify, Connect, Influence, and Convert. So if you're interested in that, hit up the website and download that and uh, you'll be on your way to making some good videos. So the next one is to design clickable thumbnails. So, uh, you know, if you're a YouTuber, you hear about all this, you know, jabs about, you know, thumbnails and it's gotta be a good thumbnail. But I think, uh, you know, the drop off for a lot of us when we hear about clickable thumbnails is that the reality is we're not graphic designers, you know? Um, the reality is that, you know, again, you're going to be better by doing better. By making more videos, you're going to be forced to make more thumbnails, and your thumbnails will get better as you go. Um, but um, I think, you know, um, and, and what happens is <laughs> you're going to be making some pretty bad thumbnails starting out. But I'm going to show you some quick ways to, uh, to jumpstart your thumbnail game to just uh, really kind of uh, bring it so you understand exactly what and how it should look. Now, not only is the thumbnail and the design of the thumbnail, um, all of it, okay? Why you're making the thumbnail is to make your video clickable. So a lot of times in um, YouTube, you will, um, oh, let me go back. Let me go back here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, a lot of times in YouTube, you will see videos, you know, in search results perhaps, you're looking for a video and it's just like the d default thumbnail for that video. It's, it's like a still frame from the video or, or maybe you went out of your way and made a, a still frame for that video. But those are the types of thumbnails that are less clickable. I wouldn't say they're not clickable. They're less clickable. Video, uh, thumbnails, as you see on the screen now, like mine, and I'm not saying I'm the best thumbnail graphic person, which I'm not, but these are types of thumbnails that get clicked. My click through rate, which is an analytic inside YouTube for how many impressions your your video gets on search results and how many times people actually look at it. Um, and it's, it's a good. So, so another part of the thumbnail game that um, I can share is that the title of your video and the thumbnail of your video are, they, they work in tandem. They're just as important to each other. So you're following the SEO strategy, okay? The video SEO strategy, you're Titling your video, you can see mine. How to best, um, how to use Google Meet. You know, those are titled that way to appeal to the search engines. Um, not because I'm trying to game the system, but I do want people to watch the video, and I think it's a pretty good video. So, so that's the confidence you have to have in, in going after this stuff on YouTube. You just got to put yourself out there, get over yourself, like I said earlier. Um, but these thumbnails 
are the type of thumbnails that cl that get clicked. And the reason for that, I think, is the colors, it's the um, the size of the text on screen. Um, you got to remember is that a lot of us are looking at YouTube on our phones. Okay, so me showing this on desktop is it looks great because it's on desktop, but you know on your phone, your phone screen's different different size. Regardless of what phone you have, it's not the thumbnail is pretty small. You know, it's uh, it's not that what you see now, and so you have to keep that in mind when you're designing a thumbnail that it can be read if there's text on screen or seen on a mobile device. So one um, one thing that's really popular with a lot of creators early on is something called Canva, and that's what you see now on the screen. Uh, Canva has a uh, it's free, free to sign up. You can create YouTube thumbnails on Canva. They have a lot of templates you can choose from. And I think early on when you're first making thumbnails, you're trying to make them on your own and they might suck and that's fine. That's how we learn. But then you find Canva and you're like, wow, they have, they have all these templates that have all these pre-made thumbnails on it and make it super easy for you to create your own thumbnails just by typing in your own words. And that's fine. I love Canva. If you're new to Canva or use Canva, it's great. But what you got to be mindful of is that a lot of these templates have hard to read text on when viewing a thumbnail on a mobile device. For instance, the one you see on the screen here, the text is really small. If you were to look at it on a mobile, you would have a hard time reading what that says. And if you can't read it, then it's pretty much pointless to even have that thumbnail or even have that text on there. Um, so what you want to go with is something like this. You could read that from a from a mobile device easily, and you can you can make that like your channel. That's actually a pretty cool thumbnail, actually. I mean, I'm not gonna lie; it's not the, like the most like dynamic one, but it's easy to read and it's easy to understand what's happening and why I might want to click in the video. It's definitely way better than having no thumbnail or a potentially uh, crappy thumbnail that has really small text or skinny text or too much stuff in the video uh, and you don't even have to use text you know it, text is just something that helps support you know when you glance at it um, you can certainly tell a story and that's what you want to aim for is you're telling stories with these thumbnails um, you can tell a story without showing any text on the thumbnail um, but I would recommend that you consider making thumbnails because it, they're going to make your stuff better so again, something like this, it looks cool. It is cool for a graphic on a website that you might be viewing full screen. It's not cool for a video thumbnail because the, this text right here is just too small. Uh, and so again, if people aren't be able to read it, it's like, why is it even in there? Uh, they're not understanding your message. And again, I think it's too much text for a thumbnail. Thumbnail is, you know, like this one we saw here. It's three words or this one right here. You know, it's it's bold. It's on you know got a dark surface to it. It's easy to read. Um, you don't want to you know fluff it up with too much text because if it's too much text, it's again just hard to read. And like this one or or this one here, it's just too hard to read on a mobile device. So you always got to be planning from a mobile device, whether you use a mobile device or not. So Canva's a really good alternative to do that. I use uh, a lot of things. I use this. This is called Kapoing. I'll put a link to Kapoing below. You can use this to sign up for a free account. Um, Kapoing is pretty much a modern video editing platform for modern video creators. So it's actually a pretty awesome um, uh, tool that I use. Um, but um, I'm going to jump in here real quick and show you kind of just some formatting that you could use inside Kapoing to uh, make your own thumbnails or to just make video better thumbnails regardless of what you're making. Um, I, I, I think when it comes to YouTube, a lot of us, we, we all have ch different types of channels, right? Um, I guess a lot of what I've been talking about is going on camera and putting yourself on camera and, and connecting with people because I think at the end of the day, people want to connect with people. So if your channel doesn't, doesn't show your face, you know, I would consider showing your face. Um, but certainly there's a lot of um, channels out there that don't show their face and they're highly successful. So, again, it's at the end of the day, it's what you want to do. I personally like to include a face. It gives you an opportunity for people to recognize you. It gives you an opportunity to be creative. It gives you an opportunity to 
make a stupid face sometimes to hopefully maybe in, um, entice someone to click your video. It's a game, and that's actually pretty fun. I like, I like making thumbnails, but typically I like to p position myself, my body, kind of on, the, on the, what you see the right side of the screen. Uh, and the reason for that mainly is because what um, you don't see on this screen that you'll see on YouTube is you'll see these um, timestamps here, you know, how long the video is. And that's a graphic that shows up on mobile. It shows up on desktop, as you can see here. Um, and that, that little timestamp can cover your, it cover, it, you know, goes over top of your thumbnail. So if you have text on this side of the screen and it goes down into that region, it's going to be cut off. And you see that all the time. Just go. Now, it's not the hugest deal. But again, if like, if it's being cut off, then it's like, why, you know, just make the change to move it up. So I like to put my face kind of on this side, knowing that that time stamp is just going to be covering up my chest or something like that, which is really not important. It's more about my face, my eyes, my facial expression, you know. And then I like to put the text inside this area over here. Uh, and I like to make it big, you know, make it big for someone can read it, you know. Um, impact is not my favorite font. I actually hate Impact. Um, I would use something like Mon Montserrat or Helvetica, something big, something bold. Um, Bebes Nue is a good one. I'm probably talking um, uh, foreign language here, but um, the names of fonts are just weird. Um, but basically, what you're looking at right here, I mean, as simple as it is, this is the format for a clickable thumbnail. It's got your face. You've got some sort of cool background behind you. Um, maybe we make this thing... Uh, we make it blue. Is that going to do it? No, it didn't. Uh, we go right there. We got blue. You know, we got white text, a blue background, and your face. That right there is a clickable thumbnail, my friends. So stop overthinking th what the thumbnail needs to be. This is this is it. Okay, this is a good starting point. Let's just say that it's a good starting point. The biggest, the really the biggest seller for me is how big the text is because it's, it's mobile friendly and you want people to be able to see it because people can't be able to see your text or read it. It's just, it's not clickable. People are going to like not either understand it or try and stare at it a little bit harder, but you know, um, so in the end, just make thumbnails with bigger text. If you're using text, if you're making, if using uh, backgrounds or something or objects, just make those objects Fill the screen with that object, you know, even though you took this cool photo and it's got some great composition and blurry background and it looks great zoomed out, like just crop in on it and bring that thing to the forefront so we can see it when we're scrolling on mobile. All right. All right. Let's see here. I think this is the last one. Yeah, yeah. So piggyback off trends. So I think uh, this is basically um, taking advantage of popular topics, topics that are trending, uh, whatever it be, maybe there's, uh, so whatever your niche is, there's something likely that's trending in it, whether it's, uh, something new, a new product, uh, a new way to do something, uh, um, it could be anything like that. Those are, uh, types of content that you want to piggyback off of. Um, if there's, because likely there's a lot of people making videos or a lot of people looking for that content, like right now, like it's going on right now. So, as a content creator, you can use that at, to your advantage by thinking, okay, if I make content about this thing that's trending, I have a pretty good chance at ranking my video and getting tons of views and tons of viewership. Now, I with trending topics, it's you have to tread lightly. It's not all like, oh my God, I gotta you know go out and piggyback off every trending topic. Trending topics are risky because they're trending and they likely won't trend um, for the next two months or three months or a year from now, they might not be trending. So you might get a lot of like exposure early on. Uh, but you know, six months from now, whenever it happens, it's going to drop and you're going to, and that, that video is going to start performing very poorly. So you want to be mindful of that when you're piggybacking. Um, if you go back and look at my very first video, um, there is a video camera app called moment, uh, pro camera that was coming out for iPhone. And it was basically a video camera app that acted like a DSLR video camera. You could set the f-stop, the shutter speed, the color balance, a lot of stuff that you can't do on your native video camera app. Um, and this was right around the time that I knew I had to take YouTube seriously 
um, for myself just because I like making videos and sharing with people. But uh, I decided to launch the channel on that video because um, it, it was trending and it was had been trending for, I don't know, a day. And I noticed there was the only video up about it was the video was the uh, promotional video <laughs> from Moment. You know, it was like their own promotional corporate video looking thing. Um, and so I was I was one of the first to um, make a video on the fly and 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 get it up there. And what happened was that video helped grow my channel a lot because it, ha it was ranking uh, number one, number two, number three in search results, not only on YouTube, but also on Google. Uh, it was trending. So people were looking for it. And guess what? They were seeing my video pop up. And that's how I got a lot of views to that video early on and a lot of um, um, some good subscribers from that video. Uh, so, so it can trending piggybacking off of trending topics, or um, can be very fruitful. Uh, so definitely take advantage of it because it's there. And um, but you want to be mindful again. You want to follow the process that we did with um, finding the key phrase. Um, you know what I meant to show you. Let me jump over here into uh, this website. So to f <laughs> keep on talking about piggybacking off trending topics, you're like, how do we find trending topics, Brian? Sorry, I'm going to share this screen to you with you now. Um, this is one way to do it. Um, this is something called Google Trends. It's trends.google.com. Um, I'll place a link to it in the in the chat here. Um, but what this website will do or does is it tells you what's trending in search results. And so why that's powerful is because you can see what's trending. Uh, let me show you. There's a lot of stuff on the home page here you can do. You can see Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian are trending um, just about indefinitely on Google uh, in the U.S. Um, they're always up there. Um, but it also gives you some other data, some stuff that you can look at. But I don't want you to get too lost in like how the data and you don't really be able to really read that stuff is it can look confusing. But let, we'll just stick with the whole Zoom uh, topic and again follow along with me you can type in your own topic whatever topic key phrase keyword uh, topic that's you know related to what you do um, we can do zoom video conferencing because that might be a more broad term in terms of zoom video background zoom video conferencing is a pretty broad term and we get this drop down here for search term right here go ahead and click on that and it's going to run um, the uh, the numbers here uh, so what I like to do um, when I'm researching for this stuff is to find to scroll down to word <laughs> related queries down here so these are um, uh, maybe this wasn't a good search topic I bad example because this really isn't trending probably let me type in something more generic uh, it was definitely trending a year ago but not not, not as much now let me type in something like video editing okay this will be a better example um, so it load, the screen loads, scroll to the bottom, and you want to focus on the related queries over here. Uh, what's cool about this is it shows you um, the search terms that are trended. So this content's trending because people are looking for it. Well, it's showing you what people are typing in to find that content. So this is like can, you kind of look at people's keystrokes here. So we've got, uh, we got, you know, Easiest video editing app, great video editing software, best laptop for video editing, you know, 500%, up 4,000%. Breakout means it's the new one. It's kind of gaining some traction. Um, you can click through here. It usually loads about 25. Um, so there's some more here that relate to different types of programs and platforms, uh, different uh, applications. So what you can see is that there's a lot of these topics that are trending. So you're looking at these because you're looking for basically an idea, an idea of maybe I should make a video called best video editing apps for Android or, you know, making a video about the easiest video editing app or an easy video would be best laptop for video editing. Any topic, every topic out there has search terms that are like this. You know, it's, it's video related because I'm typing in video related stuff, but Whatever you do is going to be—it's going to be here, you know. Um, it's going to be there. So, so you can look at these free video editing software without watermark. It's a video I actually have planned to make. Um, these are these are phrases that are trending, 
And so if you can make if you can be the first one to make the video, that's great. Making the video regardless is great. Titling it, you know, something like easiest video editing app, that's that's a pretty cool title to me. That could be the title of the video. Free editing software without watermark. I think that's the title of the video. Um, so you don't, you know, you want to use the key phrase in your title, but sometimes these are titles themselves. Um, YouTube Studio would not be a good um, title because it's too short. You know, add something to it. How to use YouTube Studio? Best YouTube Studio updates. You know, whatever it is, you're still using that search phrase, that search term in your title, and that's what makes it, makes the connection. So Google Trends is amazing. Definitely check it out. You can access it on your phone as well. And uh, it's really great. So um, hope that was helpful. Those are the topics I discussed today. Um, certainly um, hope it helped you get some better ideas on how to pursue it. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer the questions. I'm happy to uh, uh, look at your channel if you want to put your channel in the, in the chat below. Uh, if you have any questions about YouTube or Zoom or you know anything like that, I'd be happy, happy to help. But let me go back and... We got a lot of action in the chat. Um, let me go here, and we've got uh, the jail report. Yeah, man. Okay, yeah, jail report. So that's my buddy Greg. What's up, man? Um, Canva's is. Um, yep, I'll put a link to it if you if it's not, but you can just search it. Canva. It's free. It's really great. And then Kapwing. I think Jacob put it in the chat. Kapwing's is amazing as well. Um, those are great ones for. Um, making thumbnails a uh, good place to start making thumbnails that get clicked uh, there's certainly bigger and better softwares out there um, that you can do bigger and better stuff with but uh, those are good for starting out what's up jacob zeus thanks for modding for me today you're awesome um yeah so what's going on guys what's happening today <laughs> i feel like i just rambled on for a little bit but i hope it was helpful um, and, uh, definitely be able to maybe use some of that to think about your channel differently and, and grow it. You know, I've only ever just, you know, I, I've done this for clients, but, you know, doing it for yourself is, is always different. I think, uh, pursuing a YouTube channel, um, being a content creator, trying to be a con con content creator, <laughs> trying to create cool stuff, you know, experiment. I think that's what the beauty of YouTube is, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the, the goal of doing all these things is to grow your channel, to get more views, to get more subscribers, for you to be happy, you know, to be you, you to be, you know, um, satisfied with the effort <laughs> that it takes to uh, to pursue YouTube. Because uh, at the end of the day, you're still having to make videos, and by God, every you know any any form of media content related to social media, um, any platform, uh, this video making a video trumps everything it trumps it all making a tweet doing an instagram post like just you making a video uh will i think always trump uh any sort of image or or uh, post on a uh, social media platform and certainly on youtube you have to compete with video uh and uh, it goes to say too i think uh, by you and taking some of these um, uh, ideas is that you know just by you putting yourself on video you're becoming the expert in that topic, um, which can be very beneficial for perhaps your business or your brand. Uh, it can also be beneficial for growing a YouTube channel because when people watch your videos and they see you talking about this and they like you, then that's people that are maybe going to start subscribing to you or want to watch more of your videos. So it works both ways. So those are some of the the ideas, the things that I do because um, – you know, I've, there's a lot of people out there I've learned from, a lot of um, great channels out there that also talk about um, how to grow YouTube channels. And um, and it, so there's a lot of information out there that uh, is far beyond what I have talked about today, uh, more specific perhaps about what I talked about today. But I've had a lot of you asking me some um, what are some of the some YouTube tips, basically. And that's what I wanted to go through with you today was those tips. So, um, so yeah. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to jump off here and call it a day. Uh, you'll definitely be able to watch the playback. If you all have any questions, I'll hang on here for maybe for one more minute and answer any questions. But otherwise, uh, I'll do my outro. 
And so the, there you have it. There's my top tips for my top growth strategies for making videos on YouTube and growing a YouTube channel. Uh, once again, thanks for watching Video Zeus, helping you create videos that get results. <laughs> you see, it's easy. You follow the template, man. It just just makes it easy to talk about that stuff and to say stuff like that. Uh, and you know, it actually it actually does pretty well. It does. It performs well, and people people dig it. So. Um, so that's all I got today. I hope everyone's doing well. Any questions you have, just put them up in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And I appreciate your time and we'll see you in the next stream.